I guess we'll leave it at that without going yeah. too spoilery. But um, I, Ed, let's let's bounce over to you. Um, our questions are: How have you been? How have comic books been? I guess what have you been reading and what's been going on? Um, I've been just super busy. Uh, the last year has been like the busiest of my life between writing comics and working in film and TV at the same time and dealing with like some intense family stuff and just kind of trying to juggle too many things and uh, still, you know, dealing with the living in the pandemic a little bit here and there Mm -hmm. (laughs) in those, Mm -hmm. in those moments of like, is this safe to do or should I just not go to comic conventions? Like things like that. (laughs) Um, Yeah. Mostly, mostly okay though. Just, uh, just a lot of, a lot of work, good problems to have. Um, I've been, you know, this year uh, working on a criminal TV show for Amazon and and adapting one of our books into a movie with a, with an Oscar winning director uh, attached. So there's been a lot of like positive movement towards, you know, getting some of our stuff adapted and hopefully, hopefully things will start getting announced soon if they, if they actually happen. But I've, I've learned over the 20 years we've been doing this to, to never count on anything until you're actually on set watching it be filmed. And even then, apparently these days they can just delete it and take a tax write off later. So. Right. Right. Um, <laughs> but yeah, just, just a lot of that. And um, the comic I've been reading uh, the last like week or so is this uh, watership down hardback by um, adapted, by, adapted from the Richard Adams book by James Sturm and Joe Sutphin. Mm-hmm. And it's, it's about, Five, I want to say 500 pages or so, and it's really good. It's uh, I heard about it, and I was like, oh, that's interesting. I'm not sure. I think it should be adapted into a graphic novel. But then I thought, well, I like the movie. I mean, the movie scarred right. most of everyone I know's childhoods. Um, <laughs> And, you know, but I was, my dad told me ahead of time, it wasn't a kid's movie. So I just loved it and and thought it was just this really bleak, you know, horrific movie about rabbits. But yeah, the book is, the book is really amazing. And it's, it's something I'll, I've recommended to a lot of friends who have like uh, kids that are, you know, 12 or older or so to, cause I think it might be like a really fun kind of adventure story that says a lot about life in it. And, uh, but it's just gorgeously adapted James, uh, I think did the layouts like Harvey Kurtzman style and, and adapted the okay. book. And yeah. Joe Sutphin did all the finished art. He's like, a, I guess he's like a fairly famous um, children's book artist. So, mm-hmm. um, and nature artist, but yeah, it looks, it looks just insane. It's, it's gorgeous. Does it, does it go into the brutalities the same way that like, the movie does? <laughs> <laughs> it's, I mean, yeah, it's, it's pretty, it's pretty rough. Yeah, there's a okay. and there's a story in it from the book that I had totally forgotten. Um, that's much more brutal than like any of the L. R. R. stuff that's in the movie, where you're just okay. like, oh my god! But it's but it, it reads like a Grimm's fairy tale at that moment. Okay. Like, oh wow, this gotcha. is insane. Um, but yeah, it's just a real. I mean, I, I think it was like a five year work for these guys to make the book. So, it, but yeah. it was definitely right. it was definitely worth it, and it's like. There was a there was a Vonnegut adaptation of Slaughterhouse Five a couple years ago that actually mm-hmm. was was really good too, and that was one where I was like, I don't know if this book needs to be adapted into a graphic novel, and and it was actually a really good graphic novel. I still am on the fence about whether it needed to happen though, because I think Vonnegut <laughs> pretty much should just be left on his own because I love yeah. what he does as as what mm-hmm. they are. I don't think everything needs to. I, I get asked every now and then by like famous crime writers or authors to if i want to adapt their books into graphic novels i was like no i want to write my own books <laughs> <laughs> fair enough but yeah it's just kind of funny it shows you how big a thing graphic novels are when we all sit around and worry about comics like all these like <laughs> multi-millionaire authors who sell like a hundred thousand copies are like i need to get that graphic novel audience so, right 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 yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well i mean that's that's a really interesting thing to, to think about because it must mean that some of those authors have like a, disp- a specific vision for how things they want things to look and they want to be able to get it to paper and maybe their words just aren't enough because prose is inherently interpretive right yeah um <laughs> but if you can get the right artist to kind of nail a style uh, that's really interesting yeah um, yeah. yeah it's funny too because i think you know some of the, sometimes you know it's like anything if you're not really i guess 
we're all comics people, you know, like I grew up reading mm-hmm. comics. Like comics was my first language. I think before I even could read, yeah. I was reading comics. So like I speak in comics when I write comics, it's like, it's just normal. Like I'm, I, I've been doing screenwriting for long enough now that it's like second nature, but comics feels much more like natural to me. And gotcha. so gotcha. sometimes it annoys me when people who are not comics people are like trying to like, like I always think of them as carpetbaggers. <laughs> 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 <laughs>